Brian here, PAX West 2019, and I'm here with Jason Jason Rohr, yeah, like a lion. lion, yeah, yeah, and he's here with One Hour One Life, and this is a game that uh, caught my eye because, of course, we do survival here, and immediately it looked like a survival game to me. So we came over and, and talked to him, and this is a very unique concept of a game. I haven't, I haven't seen another one try to pull this off. So let's go into it just a little bit about what is it with this one hour. And what are you doing with your life during this time? <laughs> so uh, it's, it's played on a server, a multiplayer server with up to 100 other players uh, who are all living lives on the server. When you join the server, you're born as a helpless baby to another player who's your mother, who has to take care of you for at least the first three minutes. Every minute that passes by in the game is a year of your life as you get older and older. As you can see on the poster behind here, this is the arc of life. After a full hour, you get old and die uh, and, and leave the server, leaving the world to your children and grandchildren who take over whatever projects you're working on. So you have this brief moment in the middle of a story that started long before you with your ancestors and will go on long after you with your descendants. So that, that's something that's interesting about this is you're playing for a period of time knowing that you're not going to be able to keep what you're making or doing, but it's going to be someone else that's continuing that on. So this big world that's being built, uh, and it has a lot of the survival mechanics from what I can see, uh, but it, it, this, is on, uh, this is a PC game, so it's available on Steam right now. Yeah, it's been out on Steam for a while. So everything that you see here on the screen in the background was built by our ancestors. I'm a helpless baby here right now, and my mother's taking care of me, but there are generations and generations and generations the people who built the well, the walls, the floors, the farm. Um, and so when you're thrown into the middle of it, you sort of inherit all this stuff that other people built for you and your mother takes care of you. And so when you have a baby of your own, you're like, I, I better take care of you. Someone took care of me. I better keep adding on to this thing. And what gives uh, the stuff you're building in the game meaning is that somebody else will benefit from it in the future. So one interesting thing, though, is is there a point where you do server resets? What's the life cycle on a world? So right now, um, the game is going on an arc kind of system where uh, the very first player to join at the beginning of the arc is Eve. She's the first player, like there's nobody to be her mother. She's plopped down like, by a lightning bolt, like by an act of God. And she's the root of the family tree after that. So there are a bunch of Eves that start different families around on the server for eight hours. After that, the Eve window closes and there's no more Eves. So whatever families exist, exist. Then the families live and compete and interact and negotiate and maybe have wars against each other or whatever until there's only one family left. And once it gets to that point, it's like game over. You guys lost. And then the world has an apocalypse, which is a big white flash that wipes everything out back to nature and everyone's standing there naked again. Like, what happened? And nice. It starts over with new eaves coming in to start new families. Cool, because that, that's what I was, was wondering. Is It seems like you would get a lot of clutter. I mean, you can't just have it go on forever, uh, but it's, it's good that you have a reset system. So, and, but, but it's up to players how long it lasts, right? If, if players manage the families and help them all survive and keep them going, it could potentially go on forever, but there's always like human nature kind of takes over and something one thing happens, uh, one thing leads to another and different families die out and then it's over, right? So how do people choose servers on this? Is this something where you have a couple servers that people play on or can people host their own servers? What's what would the average player base be? Like, what would the average community be? How'd you get into that? So, right now, there's between 50 and 100 players, depending on the time of day, and they're all fitting on one main server. But there are 15 servers that I'm running that are kind of like low pop servers, right? That people that this, they're overflow servers if the population ever grows too big, but players can pick them on purpose if they want to, and then go play by themselves if they want to. And then there's a bunch of mods, like there's two hours one life that somebody made, and there's um, a community crucible server, and there's a bunch of private servers that people are hosting and for their friends and stuff. So it's the entire game is actually open source, so it's very easy to get a Linux machine and throw up your own server, uh, make mods to the game. All the artwork is available to modify as well, right? And that's one thing that we were talking about before is you have a lot of other games you've made. 19 other games that you've yeah, made? This is my 19th game, yeah. So this is 19th game. Uh, this is made under C++. He pretty much coded it from scratch. And so a lot of heart, uh, you know, of, of love going into projects like these. And, uh, and if you guys are interested in checking it out, make sure you go on to Steam. One hour, one life. Uh, and it, this, as he said, it's open source. People can go check it out. Is it So it's free? Is it free to play or how does this work? So um, the way that the open source model works in the case 
case of this game is the game is actually open source. All the content is available on GitHub. But if you want to play on the official servers, which is where all the action is happening, it's twenty dollars on Steam. Okay, so if you purchase this, then you have the ability to access the public servers. Um, but one thing nice about the open source is you could go test making mods, uh, working on servers, and running them on your local network. <laughs> have a community that plays on one of these servers. So uh, very cool. Check it out. So it's twenty dollars. Check it out on Steam, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll see you again in the future with your twentieth game, uh, maybe at PAX West uh, next year. So thank you very much. We'll see you guys later, and thanks for catching the show.